Lords of the Sith was one of the first four novels in the new Star Wars canon to be released. It's set in the middle of the Empire era and had the potential to create a whole lot of new lore yet fails to do anything new or particularly memorable. Another downside for me was that it draws a lot of influence from the Clone Wars cartoon series, something I've never been a fan of. The return to Ryloth and its characters did nothing for me and if they'd set it on a different world it might have been a bit better. The story mostly follows Cham Syndulla's three Ryloth freedom fighters as they attempt to strike a major blow to the Empire in the form of assassinating Darth Vader and the Emperor. And while the book may be called Lords of the Sith, three quarters of the book follows Cham's fighters. I've seen other reviews of this book, and one thing everybody says is that the bits between the Emperor and Vader are amazing. I disagree. I think they're okay, but they're few and far between, and there simply wasn't enough depth there. I think the story has been told from the wrong perspective, and rather than focusing on the freedom fighters, if the book had more closely followed Vader and the Emperor and their pursuit slash escape from the rebels, we could have had a book that lived up to its name and really explored the relationship between Vader and the Emperor. At a time when Disney had cancelled the old expanded universe, this was an excellent opportunity to explore that relationship and the obvious comparison for this book in the old canon is The Rise of Darth Vader by James Lucino. Lucino isn't my favourite Star Wars writer, but I'll give him credit. When he explores a subject in the Star Wars universe, he goes all out and really goes into a lot of depth. To its credit, when Lords of the Sith does focus on Vader and the Emperor, it does show a very spiteful relationship and shows how abusive the Emperor is to Vader. And when it focuses solely on Vader, it explores his transition from Anakin to Vader and how he still hasn't quite let go of his past. It's something that annoyed me, as I'd have thought Vader would by now have gotten rid of all the Anakin left in him. Unfortunately, he hasn't, and what that means is we now have a Vader dealing with guilt and his demons, and it's something the Vader character doesn't need. In the original trilogy, we didn't need a reason for Vader to be the ultimate bad guy. We just knew he was, and that was enough. When George Lucas humanised him, he added something to the character that actually detracted from the character. We don't need to know why Skeletor wanted to rule Eternia. We don't need to know why Megatron wanted to rule everything. And we don't need to know why Biff was a dick in Back to the Future. We just know he was. All these characters were good bad guys because we knew they were essentially evil. No backstory needed. They were bad and that was enough. By adding Anakin's backstory in the prequel trilogy, he changed our perception of Vader in the original trilogy from being the ultimate badass bad guy to being a victim. It meant we now had Emo Vader, basically a Vader who looks like Vader but whined like a 14 year old girl who just got dumped on a birthday. When Lords of the Sith explores Vader's character, we end up yet again with a wimpy baby Vader internally whining about his past. It's stuff I could do without and wish Paul S. Kemp had focused more on Vader's chase of the dark side. Instead, what we get is a mix of his descent into the dark side, partly through his choice and partly through the Emperor's pushing him into it, and then we also have wimpy baby Anakin whining. I understand as a character he would have regrets, but it's not the Vader I grew up with and it's not the one I want. As well as The Rise of Darth Vader, another book that Lords of the Sith could have drawn from is Darth Plagueis. I know both are no longer canon, but if Lords of the Sith had focused more on Vader and the Emperor instead of Cham and the Free Ryloth movement, we could have had so much exposition where the Emperor teaches Vader about the history of the Sith, how he was recruited by Plagueis, Darth Bane. There was so much potential here to create new lore, and it just wasn't done. I have no doubt it wasn't Paul S. Kemp's fault and firmly believe Disney wouldn't have allowed it because the movies are their focus. They make more money from movies than books, so any good stories and lore will only be seen in the films from now on. But what that translates to is a book that felt like a missed opportunity. Cham's character was written okay enough. He wasn't good or bad, just there. He has this strange obsession with exit strategies though, and I don't know why. It could be something that was mentioned in the Clone Wars, but I don't remember it to be honest. So it comes across more as if Paul Kemp was trying to write him like he's tactical genius like Thrawn, which he certainly isn't. 
Isval was a wasted character. She had so much potential to be a good, strong character in the book, but she wasn't explored nearly as much as I'd like. Isval was a former slave who was sexually abused by her Imperial masters and has been freed, and still carries all the hate with her, and it makes her a very aggressive character. In some ways, she was more Vadery than Vader himself in this book. I felt like her character wasn't drawn out to its full potential, because near the beginning of the book, she visits a brothel and frees a Twi'lek from sexual slavery while in the middle of pleasuring an Imperial. This kind of action is never explored again in the book, and I really do think they missed the mark with her. One of my favourite series of books outside of Star Wars is Harlan Coben's Myron Bolitar books, particularly the first six or seven. In those books, there's a character called Wynne, who's a super rich guy, so he, he's so rich he actually owns the building where John Lennon was shot. He's a preppy kind of character who is described as having delicate features and looking like he comes from money. It's a mistake a lot of people make with Wynne, and often people start fights with him based on his appearance, but Wynne ends up kicking the shit out of them because he's actually trained with the best martial artists in the world. Sometimes at night, Wynne goes on what's called night walks, where Wynne, with his pretty boy appearance, will walk into known brothels or crack houses completely unarmed and kill every abuser inside, freeing all the victims. This is exactly what Isvol does, and then it's never explored again. I really do feel like she could have been a great character, possibly one that could have made an appearance in other books, but she's just never fully explored, and as such, she's wasted being a side character in Lords of the Sith. Moff Moores deserves a mention because she's the first gay character in the new canon, and credit to Disney for allowing it rather than poo-pooing it. Moff Moores isn't explored very well, and her character could have done with more depth, but in terms of story, her character had its role to play. The outcome of the book is of course predictable, but I'll give Paul Kemp credit. There were moments where I was genuinely wondering if the Rebels were actually going to manage to succeed in killing the Emperor and Vader. He keeps up a fast pace throughout the first half of the book, writing great situations such as when the Rebels are on the Star Destroyer trying to evade Vader while setting off a bomb and trying to escape. That moment in particular is one of Vader's best moments in the book, showing how threatening and menacing he can be. However, the second half of the book just kind of drags. When everybody lands on Ryloth, it becomes this slow jungle hunt that has no speed to it, and it's the exact opposite of the first half of the book. It's the second half where Vader becomes emo Vader, where Isfil's character stops being explored, and where the pace slows to a crawl, because rather than characters making decisions and acting, there tends to be a lot of reaction to other things. I wasn't keen on the Emperor in the second half of the book either. We see him fighting these big space insects, and he's doing all that spinny, twirly stuff he does in episode 3. As someone who grew up with only the original trilogy, I feel the Emperor's real power has always been his ability to control Vader, his ability to turn other people's words against them, and of course, Force Lightning. To me, he's always been a character that didn't need to physically exercise power to show how powerful he was. It's something that George Lucas is responsible for, not Paul Kemp, but I still could have done without it. Overall, I feel like Lords of the Sith was a missed opportunity. So much character depth could have been explored here, and not just Vader's and the Emperor's, but also the side characters. So much lore could have been explored here, but wasn't. The first half of the book feels action focused and the second half feels like it isn't action focused but it isn't focused on anything in particular and just needed to be written so the book could end. Lords of the Sith is yet another Star Wars book in the new canon that simply isn't allowed to create any important events in the Star Wars universe because Disney want the movies to be the focus. More people see the movies than buy the books so all the important events will be in the movies not the books, because Disney can't afford to lose moviegoers by letting them lose track of events because they don't read the books. If something important happens in the books and isn't explained in a movie, Disney fears moviegoers will stop seeing the films because they can't follow along. So unless a book is particularly well done, like Claudia Gray's Lost Stars, it will always feel slightly hollow because nothing of real consequence is actually allowed to happen. Lords of the Sith is an okay book. It's not good, it's not bad, it has its moments, but they're too few and far between for my tastes. 
If you like The Clone Wars, then it's worth a read. Otherwise, you can just skip it because nothing remotely important happens here.